Well, hi, this is Jay Arthur, author of Lean Six Sigma for Hospitals and the QI Macros. We're on page 270 of the Healthcare Data Guide, and we're looking at uh, how many members we manage by phone every month. And you can see here we have a very large denominator, and so we could actually go in and say we, we only call these people once per, per customer. If we tried to do a P-chart on that, we end up with a very odd-looking P-chart, right? Everything's out of control. Now, one of the things we can do when the denominators are very large is we might choose to use the Laney P prime chart version of this. And the P prime chart will take into account the larger denominators. And if you click on the Laney P prime, it'll go ahead and calculate correct limits for these larger denominators. And you can see up here on the corner of your chart, we have P prime false and true. So even if you run a P prime chart and it looks a little odd, if you type in true, it'll redo the limits for the Laney P prime chart. So that's a pretty easy way to get to your Laney charts. And we could also do that as an XMR chart. If we just calculate that as, an, as a percentage, we could come in here and do an individual's chart. And this would show us we had some kind of out of control ranges here, a little dip and then a similar sort of chart to our Laney chart. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about our chart versus the chart you see in the book is our chart looks a little different. And I've verified this a couple of different ways. Uh, the chart in the book looks a little homegrown, and these points are actually above the upper control limit. And I've found that sometimes when you have a homegrown thing, if you miss just the tiniest thing in one of these calculations, um, it, it screws you all up. And I've verified this against other, other tools and other uh, technologies to make sure that we're right on track here. So this one's actually correct. Uh, so anyway, that's how we do a P prime chart in the QI macros.